I'm Jelena Vukovic. I'm a professor of electrical engineering and by courtesy of light physics at Stanford. And I'm also Jensen Huang, professor of global leadership. I work on experimental photonics and uh, quantum optics, and uh, I basically build photonic systems for a variety of classical and quantum applications on chip. That is the field where we're trying to miniaturize and compact optical systems into footprints that are much smaller. So we use semiconductor fabrication technologies that people are using to make microprocessors. We're working with optical devices and that way we can make optical systems that are much more portable for applications that range from augmented reality, cell phones, wearables, all the way to quantum computers. So in my group, we work on all the stages of building photonic chips, all the way from design to fabrication that is either done by us or commercial foundries that would make also computer microprocessors. And we do measurements and characterization of these chips in the labs. Powerful computing hardware is heating up and consuming a lot of energy, um, and that's not sustainable. So we're trying to make better hardware, better computers that are communicating inside of the machines using uh, by sending light instead of sending current, and that would uh, make speed much faster and energy consumption much lower. The other aspect of our work is focused on quantum technologies, and we're trying to use semiconductor platform in order to make uh, systems for quantum computing, quantum simulation, or also very secure uh, communication called quantum communication. Essentially, all of the power that we have is going to be used for AI and data centers in a few decades. So that's why we're trying to make a hardware that would uh, reduce energy consumption rapidly, dramatically, while even improving the operating speed of computers. And optics is already used in data centers, but it is used to connect the different servers inside of the data center using fibers. But now there is a push to use it also inside of the computer itself to connect a different processor and memory or different GPUs and so on. So in, in the effort to make uh, more efficient and more scalable photonic systems, my group has developed something called Photonic Inverse Design. Um, and that's a, a software tool and also approach where we can search all the possible geometries for photonic devices for these structures and find the one that is optimal in terms of smallest footprint, highest efficiency, performing something that uh, we don't know how to do with other existing uh, devices or structures. Many companies have initially licensed our software from Stanford and used it for their practical um, uh, technologies. And now there is also a spin-off company from, from my lab that is continuing the development of that software. So it's great to see the transition of something that was basic science 20 years ago, 15 or 20 years ago to something that is now really used to design photonic chips even by industry. I evaluate the benefits of, for the society in terms of uh, discoveries of new knowledge and applications. I think that both of them are valuable and sometimes something that we think is basic science or is just knowledge discovery becomes practically important uh, in everyday life as we've seen uh, in my own group over the scale of 20 years. We will see more and more of a push of putting computing systems inside of wearable devices. We already have that. Our cell phones are already much more powerful than desktop computers we had 20 years ago. Research is impacting everyday life, but it's also impacting, um, certainly always impacting knowledge, and that's also important. In modern science, actually, team effort is very important, and uh, experiments are getting more and more complex. That's, you know, progress in science is happening. It's uh, uh, especially in our field, it is difficult unless it's a theory for one person to, to work uh, isolated on an experiment. You need the teamwork and we also have a lot of collaborators throughout the world with whom we're working on this. Mm -hmm.